So for today's webinar, I'm planning to start off showing off uh, the features of the upcoming uh, 2022 release of, uh, of HydraCAD and the Hydra Library Manager. Uh, so I figured I'd start off with our Library Manager and show the new features we're going to be in implementing here. Um, so as for the new features that we have in this right now, uh, one of the nice things we're going to be adding in is uh, a lot of editing features and a lot of uh, import features um, being brought in. Uh, the first being uh, rearranging and moving around your symbols. So as of right now, if you wanted to insert a symbol into another folder, we'd actually have to re uh, resave the symbol into that folder. Um, so right now, what we can do is I can actually go into, let's just go ahead and say I want to go grab a pump symbol and go ahead and click, click on the symbol that I want, right click. Now I can actually copy that out and I can go into another folder where I just have a couple others. I can actually just paste that right into the, uh, the new system. So now, now that I have this here, you know, uh, since I just did a copy, we actually have this one um, now in test two. If I want, I can actually now cut, uh, cut this out from this folder, bring it into another uh, folder, and I can paste. And now it's out test two folder and back into the test one. So we got we've added the uh, cut copy paste feature <laughs> to to the library manager, making it really easy to manipulate and get your symbols moved around. Um, some other nice uh, features that we got on here is uh, we've actually been able to set up the uh, make or made it easier to set the root folder for uh, uh, for our documents. Um, originally, this was something that was, I don't think we were able to uh, edit this feature. So for all of our like Sun Hydraulics uh, and uh, like PDFs and our, all of our data sheets, we can actually do an edit root folder now, and I can actually change any of these um, specifically from Sun Hydraulics to a completely different uh, URL for their website. I can even change that to a local area network. Uh, folder somewhere here on my system. So let's go ahead and say I downloaded their entire data library and I wanted to keep a copy for myself. I can re edit that. Or I can even do the, device, uh, the opposite. And so if I actually have documents that are currently saved to my PC, I can even change that to a web folder address and type in the, in the URL here as well. Now I don't have anything to change on this right now, but if you were to change the root folder, so in this case, the Sun Hydraulics, it would actually change every Sun Hydraulic root folder in uh, in the library. So I'm going to cancel out that one. And yeah, so we have our full document section there. And we'll cancel out that. One of the other nice things we added in was a big import feature. So as of right now, our current import uh, library import only works with uh, our components. Um, so any of our symbols and component data that we have on there, those would be the items that get brought over. I believe our accessories get brought over as well. Uh, but ports and connections haven't been brought over in the past. So now we've actually added in the feature to import ports and connections. So the way we do that, we'll go to our start menu, go down to the vest folder, and from there, we actually have Hydra Import Library 2022. And then I'll ask us for our source library. So in this case, I'm going to be pulling from my 2021 library that I currently have. And go ahead and click OK. And that'll bring up our import library manager. So as of right now, we can actually import the symbols from our old, old library, bring in the components, component data, accessories if I would like those. But now we have the option for external ports and connections. And so I've created a couple test items in here just because I don't really have that in my library by default, but if there's anything that anyone else has uh, created, those will all be in here now. And we can actually go through and select the different types that we want in. And then we can just go ahead and click import. And go ahead and let that run. I need, oh, sorry, I need to select all first <laughs> and then click import. 
there we go. So now we actually have all that on status. And same thing for connections. I have a couple connection items over here. I can just go ahead and select all and see the ones that I've created. Again, these are just test items. I can go ahead and hit select all and import. And so these all should now be in my Hydra library. So if I come back over here to my external ports, I should now be able to find the test line that I created. Test line I created for the ports. <laughs> and a couple other ones that I've got in here that brought over. And then same for connections, all the little test ones that I've created. The other nice feature that, um, that, we've, uh, that we're adding in 2022 is our ability to now have a SQL library set up. Um, we have had SQL library um, in the past, but they were, it was a lot more complicated to set up. So now we've actually simplified it uh, by going up to the options. We actually choose the library path. And now we'll actually even be able to have a toggle in between the two. And so as of right now, I currently have my access library set up, just the folders that are currently stored on the server or on my system. Uh, and then I do have a SQL um, server set up on my PC, so I can actually toggle over to here. And we can see our um, my server name that I have, the database I'm looking for, username and password, just need to put those in. And then the two folders for my symbol library and subsystems that are currently stored on the PC that the SQL system already pulls from. The big one that I make sure you're putting in is whichever database that you're pulling in for the Hydra data is actually named in the database and then everything's good. And then once I click OK, we're actually gonna see, because I updated my access library, even for my connections and external ports, those custom items that are brought in are no longer here. Those are currently stored on the access library. And I can go ahead and set that back if I want. And we're back to having our original, or our custom items back. So moving on to Hydra, I'm actually gonna be starting off with a already made uh, a schematic here. I'm gonna be adding a few things to show off the new features. Uh, but uh, the first thing I'll show off here is setting up that SQL library here in Hydra as well. So as of right now, you can see on my uh, library folder, I currently have that test one and test two folder. So this is signifying that I am currently in my access library. And if I want, I can go up to application settings in the first section, we have our library path. And I can choose for uh, either an access database, so it's either a local or corporate, so either our local system or, an, or a, a network library if we want. Or I can just do a quick toggle over to our SQL. And same server address that I currently use, same database, username and password, and to the same folders. And by uh, enabling the modifications, I can uh, save anything back into the system and allow that uh, to get back on there. And then the SQL also has a local and corporate setup if I need to. So I can go ahead and click OK on that and we'll actually see my library now switches back over and I'm back to having my SQL, uh, SQL library. So now I have my SQL test. So I'll go ahead and switch that back to my normal library and there we go. So, and one of the other nice things that we've uh, changed here in 2022 is we actually changed how our licensing is going to work. Uh, anyone who's familiar with how the licensing currently set uh, currently is for Hydra knows that it can be a little bit of a hassle sending back and forth the activation requests and transfer requests. Um, 2022, that's all going to be uh, forgotten. Uh, we're actually going to be moving over to a cloud licensing server. So with 2022, all you'll need is a CLS ID. Uh, if anyone's familiar with our MT Tools product, it's the same setup for our, how our cloud system is going to work there. Um, with our standalone uh, licenses, there will be what's known as machine locked, and that CLS ID will only work for your PC. Once it's put in, it's activated, it sends a ping up to our server, and, and it will be activated for, I believe, a full year, uh, according to our term licenses. and that can all be checked from our help page and license information. And so you can see I'm currently on the beta. 
machine lock license. And as of right now, I've currently set my expiration date for March 17th. And my license is currently active. And then we'll have our CLS ID available uh, for anyone who wants to use that. Uh, as for a network setup, that one's going to be a little bit different. We'll uh, be doing the same thing as a local network setup for uh, MD Tools, where we have a network uh, network license server on the on the server uh, that will be installed, and then an activation ID will be given that can then be routed to any PC uh, so long as they just connect to the network. Same thing, once you get the activation ID, you put that in and you'll be golden. No no need for an activation request, no need for a transfer request. That's all, all done and gone. So moving on to the new features of HydroCAD 2022. I'll start off and I'm just gonna go ahead and start making a, uh, a pump system for our, uh, for our manifold we have here. I'll move on down. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in a pump. I'm going to bring in a variable pump this time. And I'll just bring it in. And then I want to try to find a very specific pump here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a search. I can just browse via Fluid Power Tools to find symbols that are, or data that's marked to the symbol. Oh, there you are. And I go ahead and click OK on that. And so now that I have this data, one of the things that we've actually uh, changed in here is we've actually created a nice way to search for a proper uh, pump motor adapter. And the way uh, the information that's really required for this is just the the shaft links for both the pump or the motor or and the motor. So in this right now, currently I can't see the, my my shaft link. That, didn't, uh, that wasn't brought in with this. So I can actually pull up our data sheet for it that will be attached thanks to Fluid Power Tools. And just by doing a quick search down. I believe the one that I was finding earlier was actually a quarter of an inch long for the, for the shaft length. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch that in for this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and find our motor adapter here. So let's go ahead and pull on an electric motor. Bring that in and same thing. I want to find a find a motor that'll work for this. And since I'm still going to look for the shaft length on this, I also want to find one that comes with the uh, data sheet. So by having the blue symbol, I'll be able to bring in the data sheet as well. And so with this one, currently have our our shaft dimension here. So this one is going to be uh, the E dimension, so in millimeters. And I know this one was the 355, so that's E. So that's going to be uh, 140 millimeters long. So I can go ahead and close that. And since I'm terrible at doing conversion in my head, I'm just going to go to our systems, go to unit conversion length millimeter to inches as 140 and so that's a five and five and a half inch uh, uh, five and a half inch uh, long shaft go ahead and close and on shaft length I can go ahead and paste so there we have all the information put in there so now I'm going to go ahead and give this a uh, couple of these two together Wrong one. And then give it a motor and pump adapter. Now that this is brought in, I want to make sure that I can fill out this information quickly so I can go ahead and do our search again. And this actually gives us a new search feature in this. And since I filled out the shaft length for the motor as well as the pump, it's actually given us our calculation for face-to-face -face length, and I can go ahead and click search, and it will actually give us a list of anything that actually will have that proper face-to-face -face length within. I can go ahead and select our first Parker run here, and there we go, all of our data bin. 
And if I were to change any of those parameters for the shaft length, either the motor or the pump, that will give us a different setup for our motor pump adapter. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in a connection and get our pump hooked up to our manifold here. Go ahead and break that down, just clean up the lines. And I'm actually going to change this to a pipe. So now that I have our pipe set up on this, we're actually going to do another search into this to change our connection data. So it's going to give me a nice list from what we currently have, but this is everything in our system. But I want to find a specific one that will fit for our motor and for our, um, for our pump and for our manifold. So I know that with the pump, this one actually had a 2000 PSI and a 6.6 .6 gallons per minute. So it's actually going to narrow it down based on the velocity we also have. And I can even see sorted here from the minimum minimum velocity to the maximum allowed velocity of what ones would actually work. And since my pump is actually at a three quarter, I'll go ahead and select the three quarter threaded. Bye. And there we go. So data is brought in. And then for my drawing, I actually don't want the, the pump to be connected to the to the manifold in this case. So one of the things I can also do is show off how we used to do our jumping connections. So in the older versions of Hydra, if you wanted to insert a jumping reference, it had to be an unconnected line at the end. So one one end connected, the other end open. And by clicking on that, I can just put in the uh, jumping reference. So in this case, I want this one to actually go to the tank. Oops. Destination sheet number will be on sheet two. And I'll just go ahead and say that's going to be in square A4. Go ahead and click OK. And there we go. So I have our jumping reference available. But now in 2022, we actually have the ability with connected lines to actually give it a break. So if I select the line for, with the jumping reference command, I should give us a little pop-up. Both ends of the continuous line are already connected to other items in the drawing. Would you like to break the line and add jumping reference? So in this case, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick little click. And we'll do it right there in that corner. And we can see now it's giving us a little bit of a section where we're going to be able to trim away. Now I'm going to take it back to about there. And in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and say this one is the pump. Or actually, we'll, we'll slim pressure. And it's also going to go to sheet two. But the first reference point is going to be at A1. And the other one, I'll just go ahead and say, might be at B3. And click OK. And it'll generate both. So both of our uh, items will be created. And then I can actually move all this around now. And get this out of here, of our view. And what's really cool about how our jumping references work in this is if you're ever trying to find it, if you had a very large uh, schematic where you had lots of jumping references referring to uh, individual points for the whole drawing, you can actually use this, these jumping references, to kind of navigate through Hydra. Well, so if I click jumping ref find jumping reference, and I want to be searching for where this pressure one is going to, I can say find jumping reference, select that. And it will actually bring me right over to the pump, and vice versa. But as for the tank one, since I don't actually have another jumping reference, it'll tell me that we're currently missing it. So we'll just kind of move this around and clean that up a little bit. Say this one. And so one of the other items that I want to show off is we do have another feature for uh, adding accessories. So again, on our live draw library, we have our accessory section. I currently don't have anything in my library for that, but I did create a test item just to show off that we have this feature in here. Uh, 
So back in Hydra, if I want to add an accessory now, we can actually do a quick search on there. And this will actually bring up our accessory search, which will is a little bit different now. So if I just go ahead and do a search for everything, I can actually see the full list of everything that would be in my library. And then I can add that one to there. And if I want to add even more of that one, I can even add multiple, changing the quantity. And I click OK. And all items will be created. And then if I want to re-edit that and say, well, well, um, I can do it from the edit, do a drop down and go into the edit accessories, select the system. And this will also bring in our edit accessories. If I want, I can even edit each individual um, data. So let's go ahead and say this set of bolts is actually six bolts, but I don't need these other two. So I can actually go ahead and remove both of these from the list and go ahead and click OK. Uh, so one of the other items we can do now is if we actually wanted to take this and import this um, schematic into uh, empty tools, uh, as of right now, the or I believe with the current version, you'd actually have to print that to a PDF and bring it in or export it as a uh, DWF or DXF um, in order to get that properly brought into um, SolidWorks or MD Tools uh, to be able to see it on your machine drawing. So what I can do now is I can actually go to our system. We actually have a simplify uh, DWG export now. So if I want to go ahead and highlight everything and go ahead and click enter, it'll give me a quick prompt of if I want to make this a black and white drawing, which in this case I do. So I can actually just go ahead and click enter again to say yes. And we'll go ahead and save this. I'll go ahead and save that into my oops, yes, or into my hydro drawings folder and save. And what that'll create I can actually now go to open and we'll go to the same folder. And I got my webinar drawing there. So it'll create our black and white simplified drawing. So I don't need that one currently open. But if I go into MD Tools now, there are two different ways that I know of to bring in the uh, bring in the DWG. So in this case, I currently have the uh, the block created for this item. I can actually go up here to insert. And first is the easy way. I can actually just click object. Now I actually want to bring in from file. I'll just go to a quick browse, documents, drawings, that webinar drawing. And go ahead and click OK. And there we go. So one would bring it in, and it brings it in as a nice scalable object. So I can actually get this in there. Corner. And let's go ahead and scale that properly. I do know that it shows off this uh, borderline, but when it actually plots, it will not uh, display this. So that's one way to bring that in. It does kind of give it a little bit of a rougher look. It uh, doesn't scale properly for the line line weights, uh, so it doesn't look the greatest in this in this way. But it is the easiest to manipulate. The other version, though, it's a little bit more complex to bring in, but the payoff is that it's a much cleaner looking drawing. If I go ahead and delete that one, I can actually do the same thing on this. Go to Insert, and we're actually going to do a DWG. I'll go ahead and go to my Hydro Drawings. I'm actually looking for DWG. So I'll go ahead and say uh, White Background. So we can actually see the current setup of the DWG on there. And if I want, I can actually go and say I want to bring in all of my layers, click Next. And we should see our red borderline here. Um, so I actually know that this is a D-sized sheet. I actually want to move this around here. So let's say 
think that to be mm. maybe about 24, 23 inches over. And, oops. Yeah, so a little bit of finicky, but you can see the current border of the page where the drawing is going to lay out. And so that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And there we go. So it's a cleaner version of the drawing drawn in the same format as all, everything else that will be here on the page. But the downside is that once it's in, I can't move it. <laughs> but it will be a complete copy of what that DWG shows. And each individual item, if I did want to make a couple edits or maybe even move some items around, I could still do that. Of course, I got to move everything. <laughs> Let's see. So the last feature I want to show off is um, there will be actually be an additional application that we're uh, planning to release uh, coming soon, which is actually going to be an auto updater uh, for all of S products. Um, so as of right now on our help page or help tab, we do have a check for updates that'll actually open it up, which is our VEST desktop app updater. And so as of right now, for currently for HydroCAD, I don't have any updates that are available, but for the library manager, I am still missing one. And even for MD Tools products, I am missing a couple on here. So even if you do have uh, 975 or uh, or 970, you'll still see the other versions on this list, um, which we do plan to show only for applications that are currently installed. So you can actually you know, remove those those listed that aren't here. So if you don't have MD tools, you don't have to worry. You can always have that unchecked. But we can either have these auto automatically install for us, alert us for um, uh, alert us when there is an update, and even if I were to click on one of these uh, items to install it'll actually go down the list of what is currently needed. So in this case, since how we always do our updates is in order from release, if I only wanted to install a, a service pack one, I could click this and it would only be service pack one. But if I clicked the install for Hotfix three, it would actually give me both and go in, and go in proper order when it does the install. And so this will actually be something that will be controlled um, separately. Uh, so it won't be included with the 2022 release uh, it will be released a little bit later. We're still working on some other items for that as well. And let's see. So I do see we have a couple questions. Let's see. Ah, yeah. So let's see the check for update. And uh, and will there be a notification and push message regarding updates or is this manual action? So um i believe that we are planning on for uh, planning for it to have push notifications so down in the windows section your uh notifications it should give us a listing of all available updates down there 